Hi guys, Claudia Evelyn here and today I'm here to talk about WandaVision of course. I said I would make this video on Twitter because I had too many thoughts and I didn't want to be posting spoilers and ruining it for people. I hope you've already seen it. Um, you need to have seen the first two episodes to watch this video because I'm talking about spoilers and theories and this is an opportunity for me to just completely geek out because I am obsessed with Wanda Maximoff. Wanda is my favourite superhero, my favourite Avenger. I'm just overall obsessed with the Maximoff family and like how that extends into the universe. So as you can see in this room, I don't know if you've ever paid much attention to the background, I know it changes quite a lot, but there's a lot of Wanda and Pietro and Vision and even Wiccan stuff um, in this room. So what you can see from here is that on this shelf, I have my Funkos and my figures and all that kind of thing. There's a very dodgy Pietro figure that I bought online. I don't know where on earth it's from. He's got a really orange face and that's not his official outfit. <laughs> Beside me here, I have a couple of relevant comics, which I'm going to uh, show you some pages from and tell you some stuff that might link to WandaVision. I do have three shelves dedicated to my comics. So um, yeah, you could sound a bit obsessed. Up there, they're really thin, you can't tell what they are because they're like the proper individual printed thin comics. Then I've got my kind of um, compilation ones and then below that I've mostly got Young Avengers on the bottom shelf. So yeah, I've got a lot of comics. So here we have Avengers Disassembled, House of M, The Ultimate Edition, Avengers West Coast Vision Quest, and the Vision comic from 2015 to 2016, I think. Um, these are some of the comics that the creators of WandaVision used when they were creating the series. And on my left, I have some comics in a big album. And the reason I've got it in this album is that these are the original Vision and the Scarlet Witch editions from their <laughs> weird um, comic series where they went to live in New Jersey together and had twins and just did strange domestic stuff in their small town. And this is actually probably my favourite comic series, aside from Young Avengers. I've loved this for a long time. I liked this before um, Age of Ultron even came out. So you can imagine when I found out that Pietro and Wanda were going to be in that <laughs> and they also teased the Vision and Wanda relationship, I was over the moon, like obsessed. I just love them so, so much. I love them as characters. I just love the whole like quirky, kooky vibe of this comic. So when they announced they were doing WandaVision, I was hoping, obviously I was really excited they were giving Wanda her own series, but in my heart I was desperately hoping they were going to do something weird and, and that they were going to borrow from this. Little did I know that they were going to go above and beyond. Um, they were going to put together all the kind of best and weirdest moments from their comics and bring it into this, this show. And the way they've done it is beyond my wildest dreams. It's just everything psychological and creepy and funny and heartwarming that I hoped it would be. I'm really into the pacing of it. I know um, a couple of people who've seen it are saying, oh, but you know, it's, it's going too slowly. I want to find out what the mystery is and I want to get to the battles. We know that like the big MCU typical battle stuff is happening across the last three episodes. But I actually really enjoy what they're doing right now. It's exactly how I kind of like things to be. I love the fact that we are seeing through Wanda's eyes. And so every time something creepy and weird and unsettling happens, it's like it's suddenly just brushed away and we're carried along on the kind of sitcom ride again. And it's kind of like we are doing what Wanda's doing. We are forgetting. Like we know there's creepy stuff going on and we're kind of looking out for it. But we're also enjoying it so much that we kind of forget. So it's always... A kind of creepy shock when something goes wrong. I did some research before watching the show because I knew I'd be super into it and I wanted to enjoy it to the fullest. So I watched some of the Dick Van Dyke show, which the first episode is based on. I watched some Bewitched, which the second episode is based on. And I just love their commitment to really getting it right. All this stuff has been said by reviewers before. I'm going to get on with theories and things now. You don't need to hear me talking about this. All I'll say is that I adore it. I love it, it's everything I wanted, it's creepy, it's stylized, it's, it's so weird and unusual and bold and at the heart of it is the love story that I love because Vision and Wanda are my favourite, my joint favourite Marvel couple actually because I also love Billy and Teddy so that's Wiccan and Hulkling and the only thing that I can say as a negative about this show, like the only thing, is that it doesn't have Pietro in it yet. and. My dream is for him to come back. For me, just, just thinking about this, like the fact that 
they've done so much research these writers and they've gone back to these comics like they've gone through the vision in the scarlet witch comics and in these comics they are weird there is a thanksgiving dinner um namor the submariner turns up in his <laughs> in his little in his little swimming shorts and magneto is there and quicksilver and his wife are there and it's just weird but the fact they've really gone into these comics to get their plots and to take little easter eggs from means that like they have to understand i know fully that they understand that the most important person in wanda's life is pietro or was pietro he was her entire family while she was growing up. And if you look at them in the comics, they're very much a pair. And something that Wanda struggles with in the comics is being only known as Pietro's twin sister or Magneto's daughter, even though they wreck on that later, the Vision's wife. I think all her life because of her trauma, she's had these protective figures around her, these protective male figures, and she's trying to figure that out. In her more recent solo comics, you can see her trying to branch out on her own more and come to terms with that. But Pietro is still a really big part of her life in that, and they still have a lot to wrestle with because they've been through such a traumatic past. Their past in the comics is slightly different to that in the MCU, but it's the same level of trauma, the basic premise of Pietro kind of taking a protective role uh, to wander while they were growing up because they didn't have anyone else. In the comics they're wandering around Europe together because their parents are chased away by a mob. Their parents are Roma so they experience a lot of oppression and that's all they've kind of known while they're younger. So it's pretty much just the two of them. They are their only family. And you can see in, in Pietro's comics and Quicksilver's comics that the most important person in his life up until his daughter comes along, Luna, he's Wanda, and arguably for a while it kind of still is Wanda, like they mean so much to each other, it's, it's a really deep connection, they're not just a brother and sister, it's like they are twin souls, that's kind of what they are. So the fact that he's not in it yet makes me feel worried, but I hope he's going to be in it. Like I know, I heard rumours that Aaron Taylor Johnson signed a multi-film deal when he came on as Pietro in Age of Ultron. And that's the only thing that's kept me going <laughs> since they killed him off in that film. You don't know how much that hurt seeing that because to me they are probably my favourites as a brother and sister, the dynamic they have together. And also I felt upset because they have this incredible dynamic when Vision is involved. This is why they'd be so good for WandaVision if, if it was the three of them and I hope it's Aaron Taylor Johnson's Pietro because no disrespect to Evan Peters who I think's great but his Quicksilver, his Quicksilver I will say from the X-Men films is not Quicksilver, it's Speed. So <laughs> it's a like he's a likable character in that, but that's not Pietro. Like if you want Pietro, you need to look at Aaron Taylor Johnson because he's like he stepped out of the pages of the comic. He's kind of arrogant and he's protective and he's funny and he's sarcastic. I just I do think that Evan Peters is just playing speed in that film. Like for me, that's not Quicksilver. And also in those films, if you take away Wonder, if you take away that backstory, if you take away his Eastern European roots, if you take away his twin and how he feels like because so much of Quicksilver's life, Pietro's life, has been moulded around caring for Wanda because he feels like it's his responsibility and he loves her so much. If you take those elements out of the character, is that Pietro and Maximoff anymore? I don't think it is. No disrespect again, I know that Evan Peters has been rumoured to be in WandaVision and I can't wait to see him. I just hope he's not playing Pietro because, <laughs> or if he is, I hope he's playing Pietro just like Aaron Taylor Johnson did because that portrayal of Pietro was just, he'd stepped right out of the comics for me. So I want to talk to you about some theories after watching WandaVision and to explain some stuff to you um, if you're someone who maybe is new to Wanda and Vision in the comics. This is like the first time that my knowledge about these characters is actually useful to people I think. So yeah, here we go. So who is the villain of WandaVision? And I would put money on the fact that one of the villains at least is the Grim Reaper. So I'm going to put a picture of the Grim Reaper on the screen right now. I'm going to put him here. Now this would be a super smart move from the creators. And there's also a lot of clues within the show that are leading us towards the Grim Reaper showing up at some point. And it makes total sense if we look at the Grim Reaper's backstory. So he is particularly tied to the Vision in comics history. And I will tell you exactly why. So a little history lesson on Vision from the comics. So a long time ago in Marvel Comics, Ultron wanted to create the Vision. So he used the body of the original Human Torch, which actually was an android then, 
it's not Johnny Storm, <laughs> it's another one. But it's like an android body of the Human Torch. The problem was that the android Human Torch still wanted revenge, and so he had to be wiped. So Ultron tries a different tactic the second time around. He gives Vision emotion so he can feel loyalty and become his devoted servant, son, and weapon, while also planting a control chip in his head so he can't disobey. But giving him human brain patterns, even with the control chip, majorly backfires on Ultron when Vision develops a conscience, turns against his master, and joins the Avengers. But how does he get his emotions? And this is something that we've not seen delved into in the MCU. So as you know, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and we see this in Age of Ultron, Vision comes about because Tony Stark creates Ultron, Ultron then creates Vision. So in the MCU, Tony Stark uses Jarvis. Jarvis the AI kind of becomes Vision's personality. It's not really explained, it's, it's said that he's a part of Tony and that uh, maybe that's how he gets some of his personality, but it's, it's really not delved into. So in the comics, Vision is actually given the brain patterns of another man, a man called Simon Williams, otherwise known as Wonder Man. Now, how does this relate to the Grim Reaper, you may ask? Well, the Grim Reaper's real name is Eric Williams, and Wonder Man's real name is Simon Williams. They are brothers. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about Simon Williams, and it's relevant, I promise. Um, it's relevant to the Grim Reaper, and especially because I think that later on in the show, we're either going to hear about Wonder Man, or we're going to actually meet him. I don't know, we know nothing about the show um, so far beyond the basic plot, and I feel like, considering the creator said that we were going to get more on not only Wanda's backstory, but Vision's, it would make perfect sense that we're also going to learn about Wonder Man and how his brain patterns were used to create the Vision in the first place. So Simon Williams in the comics had a tech company, and he was one of Tony Stark's biggest competitors. Tony Stark overtakes him in business, and it gets to a bad situation where Simon Williams does not have enough money, he owes people money and his business is failing, and he resents and hates Tony Stark because of this. So he goes to his brother Eric, that's the Grim Reaper, for help, although he's not the Grim Reaper yet. So what you need to know about Simon and Eric's backstory, so that's Wonder Man and the Grim Reaper's backstory, is that they came from an abusive household. It was Eric who was particularly bullied and beaten by their father. It made him mean and nasty in response, and you feel a bit sorry for him until when he's older he starts working for Hydra and being evil, <laughs> but you feel sorry for him then. And then his brother Simon is also part of this dysfunctional home, but he's treated slightly better. He's favoured more, especially by their mother. So they've got a complicated sibling relationship where they care about each other a lot, they love each other. Simon's probably the only family member that's actually nice to Eric, so they have a bond, but this gets very complicated as the years go on. So Wonder Man actually begins in the comics as a villain, because he wants to get revenge on Tony and improve his business, so he goes to Eric and Eric gives him some dodgy contacts, because at this point in time Eric is living a dodgy life with dodgy contacts, you know, on his way to becoming a villain. Simon gets caught for his dodginess, he goes to prison, and while he's in prison, who does Simon meet? but Baron Zemo. Now Baron Zemo offers him powers, he says I can give you powers, you can become Wonder Man if you use your powers to fight the Avengers. Wonder Man's into that, he's got serious beef with Tony Stark, so he goes ahead with that plan for a while, but because Wonder Man is ultimately good, he realises that he's not doing the right thing, he changes sides, ultimately becomes a good guy, but he ends up dying. Eric then becomes the Grim Reaper because he blames himself for Simon dying, the only family member that was ever kind to him. He becomes a full-on villain, he gets like a helmet, he gets a scythe, like the actual Grim Reaper, and he wants revenge on the Avengers. So it's a pretty sad story up till that point. And the fact that this is a story of losing a sibling, of that kind of family dynamic, of wishing someone back really fits in with the tone of WandaVision. Okay, so I might have lied when I told you that Wonder Man was dead, but remember that he's got superpowers. So he's actually in a coma, he's in like a sort of hibernation state. He's effectively dead, but not really, because it, it takes more than that to kill him. So Tony Stark puts him in stasis, they're allies at this point, um, and he takes some of his brain waves and he keeps them, um, and he keeps them for years. So Wonder Man is gone for a really long time. In comics history, I think the writers just didn't know what to do with Wonder Man at that 
that point, so they sort of wrote him out. He's in a coma, it's fine, we'll come back to him later. So it's around the time that Wonder Man is in a coma that Vision is given his brain patterns. So at this point, Vision is able to emote, he's able to become more human, and this is all because of Simon. He has Simon's emotions. He's not the exact same person as Simon, but he has his emotions, maybe his reactions, he's able to feel like Simon would. And this is actually why, in the comics, Sometimes Wanda, when she's not with Vision, she's romantically interested in Simon Williams and it's because she loves Vision, she loves him for his soul, for his mind, and he shares those brain patterns with Simon, so really it's, it's kind of the same thing for Wanda, it's the same person in a way. It's because of these brain patterns that he has from Simon Williams that Vision's able to fall in love for the first time, so he falls in love with Wanda, he gets married, he makes great friendships, all the while, we have the Grim Reaper watching this. So Eric, the Grim Reaper, he's now allied with Hydra, but he really wants his brother back, and somehow he's got hold of Wonder Man's body. So there's a storyline where he contacts Vision, and he says, I will transfer your brain patterns into Wonder Man's body if you work with me against the Avengers. Now his motivations are always a bit murky, so at times you can read it as if it's because he misses and loves his brother, at other times it just seems like he's flat out evil. But at this point he kind of views Vision as a brother of sorts, so to him Vision is the closest thing to Simon, which means he's kind of the Grim Reaper's brother. So of course Vision doesn't go along with this either, this doesn't work out, and they can't bring Wonder Man back anyway, they realise that they can't. So in a later storyline, the Grim Reaper somehow manages to bring his brother back through sort of reanimation. But this kind of ends up driving Eric insane because he doesn't believe that Vision is his true brother, he's just got Simon's brainwaves, but he also doesn't believe that this new Simon is really his brother. So he feels like his brother that he loved is gone and that these two men are imposters. So we have a situation in the comics where you've got the Grim Reaper now as the villain against his brother, reanimated brother, Wonder Man and his <laughs> Synthesoid brother, brother, Vision. Right, so I think that's enough backstory there. So I'm going to show you some of the clues that we've had in the show to the fact that the Grim Reaper might be coming into WandaVision. So number one is, in the intro to episode two, as Vision is going through the floorboards, it's very, very quick. You can see um, what looks like the Grim Reaper's helmet in the floorboards in Wonder Vision's house between the floors. And you've also got bones, um, which is quite creepy and sinister, and it could just be you know, a metaphor for how creepy the show is. <laughs> There's skeletons in the closet. But actually, it seems like it might tie in quite a lot to this comic here. So this is the Vision comic series from 2015 to 2016. And this is a comic that the creators have used a lot in building this story, especially in Vision's side of the story anyway. So I was expecting um, quite a few Easter eggs from this, but it looks like maybe they're going for more than easter eggs, if we're correct. So a brief description of this comic series. So at this point, Vision is not with Wanda anymore. After Wanda realises that her perfect life with the children, her twins, isn't real, that the children were never really her kids, they were actually part of a demon soul, <laughs> a demon called Mephisto. I'll talk about Mephisto in a moment. And basically, it drives her insane. But the sad thing about the way Wanda is written in the comics, and I think how they're writing her for WandaVision, is that she's not really aware of what she's doing, so it's very subconscious. So when she's in pain, she doesn't seem to realise what she's doing, and we've kind of seen that in WandaVision. For example, when Mr. Hart chokes at the table, it's kind of left open for us, like, did he just randomly choke and Wanda froze because it reminded her of death and she doesn't want death in her universe because that reminds her of her grief over Pietro and Vision? Or did she kind of subconsciously make him choke because she needed him to shut up because that was someone in her subconscious telling her that she had to wake up, that things weren't right. So that's pretty much what happens in Avengers Disassemble. So in this storyline, um, because she's lost her children, Wanda doesn't realise she's doing it, she sends a Quinjet with the Vision in it crashing into the Avengers mansion. Now Vision escapes that because he's a synthesoid, but then Wanda uses her powers to hex She-Hulk. She-Hulk goes on the rampage, and she rips Vision apart, and Vision dies. Don't worry, he does <laughs> come back in the comics, because he can be rebuilt. But, um, yeah, it's it's pretty awful, and there's not really much coming back for Wanda and Vision from that situation. And just as a side note, in Age of Ultron they do a similar scene to this, uh, where they have Wanda trying to hex um, Bruce Banner, because they want him to go on a rampage. So that is actually what she does to She-Hulk in Avengers Disassembled, 
And that's how Vision gets torn apart. And when Wanda realises that this was her and realises what she's done, Wanda goes into a sort of breakdown. She can't believe it. She's she's grief-stricken. It's just really horrific. Wanda in the comics, there is nobody stronger who has been through more trauma than Wanda Maximoff. I just love her so much. Anyway, once Vision is rebuilt and he's not with Wanda anymore, he wants to explore what it means to be human. And it's his way of trying to deal with the grief because although Vision doesn't talk about it very much, Vision obviously has a great amount of grief for the twins that he lost with Wanda and for Wanda and his life and who he was before. Everything changed for him. So poor Vision creates a new family. He creates a synthesoid wife and synthesoid twins. Now for the wife, he actually uses Wanda's brain patterns. So he's effectively creating a version of Wanda, which is incredibly sad. And the fact that he's created twins called Vin and Vivian, I mean, the fact they're twins means that, you know, this is his way of dealing with losing Thomas and William, the twins that he and Wanda had. So in this story, not only does he create a family, but he lives in the suburbs and he's desperate to have a normal life. He wants to become more human and feel that domesticity again. But he doesn't want chaos, because the thing that's so great about Vision and Wanda, but also the thing that kind of destroys them time and time again, is that Wanda is so emotional and in a way uncontrollable, she's chaos. But Vision is order, he's calmness, he's rationality. And these two things work so well when they're together, but they also kind of put the other off sometimes. I mean, you've got that comic scene that's become a bit of a meme now, where you see Wanda getting really angry at Vision that he's not emoting and she yells at him that he's a toaster which is you know horrible and you also have at times vision reacting quite coldly to wanda's emotional needs like they love each other so much but they're such different characters so in this comic series one day vision is away at work who breaks into the family home it's the grim reaper the grim reaper breaks in so the reason eric breaks in is that he resents the fact that after he and simon had such an abusive horrible family life the Vision is now using his brother's brain patterns and has created a family for himself and seems to be living in bliss and it makes Eric kind of wild with jealousy. He bursts in and he brutally attacks the twins, the children. So Virginia, who has not been trained to hurt anyone, she's been trained to be rational, even though she's a synthesoid, she is Wanda without that emotional instability. Her instinct to protect her children seems to override that she actually ends up killing the Grim Reaper in their home. She's horrified by what she's done, she's scared that she's going to disappoint Vision, that Vision's going to think she's ruined everything and created chaos. So she buries the Grim Reaper in their family garden and his bones are... they're in the yard. So that picture also might allude to the fact that in the comics you have Virginia killing the Grim Reaper and hiding his body. Now again that could be an easter egg but does that mean that the Grim Reaper is likely to get into this universe, that he's going to threaten the twins somehow and that perhaps Wanda is going to kill him and it's something that she's going to have to hide. It's going to be like a skeleton in the closet moment like Mr Hart says to Vision in the office. I wouldn't be surprised with the tone of this series if they tried to carry on that kind of sitcom likeness while there was a, a literal murder, you know, being hidden under the floorboards. It would really suit the tone of the show, even if it is dark. So the second clue that this is about the Grim Reaper is Agatha's pin. So I'm going to put that on the screen for you now. It's hard to make out because it's so small, but it does look like she's got an image of the Grim Reaper on her button or on her pin. I don't know what else that could mean other than, I suppose, death, but considering we've had the Grim Reaper's helmet, I mean, it all adds up. So the next clue is super, super clever. And actually, I was talking to Dan about this. I don't know where Dan found this, but um, somebody had realised that the number plate on Wonder and Vision's car in episode one, which I believe is 0102, corresponds to an issue of Marvel Comics. This Avengers comic is literally called My Brother the Grim Reaper. That was such a smart find, so whoever found that is a genius. These things can't be coincidences, like the Grim Reaper, <laughs> the Grim Reaper's gonna show up, I just know it. Okay, so yet another clue that we're getting into the story of Simon Williams and Eric Williams, the Grim Reaper and Wonder Man, is that when we look at the opening to episode two, there are three interesting posters in the supermarket that Wanda is in. One of them says Wonder Oats, it looks like. Now, that to me seems to be hinting at Wonder Man. Now, you might think I'm reaching here, but the other posters also do correspond to important moments in the comics for Wanda and Vision. So you've got 
Bova milk. And um, Bova is, um, <laughs> she's a cow that's kind of part human, or she's a cow that's been experimented on by a, a mad scientist called the High Evolutionary. And he made her a sort of humanoid cow. And um, believe it or not, she was actually <laughs> midwife to baby Pietro and Wanda in the comics. Yep, um, they had a cow midwife, it's 100% true. I don't know if they'd go for that, but the fact they put that in, I mean, it's weird enough they could get away with it in this show. Next to that, we have Auntie A's and a cat, and that seems to be linked to Agatha Harkness, who um, I think a lot of people have assumed is actually the character Agnes in the show. In the comics, she's a witch that's Wanda's sort of mentor, and she appears with a cat. She's like very stereotypical witchy. So my theory about Agnes is that that Agatha Harkness is a witch that went into Wanda's universe to try and help Wanda a long time ago. We don't know how long Wanda's been rewinding time for, remember? Because when she saw the beekeeper, it wasn't shock, it was almost recognition. So for all we know, we're experiencing like the 2000th time as our first. She could have been going back to the 50s every time and just rerunning through the time periods. But I think maybe because she's a witch, Agatha Harkness has been able to hold on to more of herself than perhaps the others. So for example, Monica seems to have forgotten who she is entirely unless she's just acting and she's a sword agent. But I think probably she's forgotten who she is. I think maybe Agatha is in the process of forgetting because Agatha Harkness seems to have become Agnes. Like it's all kind of blurred together. Like Hodor in Game of Thrones where Hold the Door became Hodor. Also, loads of Agnes's lines kind of feel witchy. Like the first thing she says to Wanda, one of the first things is like, I'm charmed to meet you. And she says she can do something in a snap. There's just lots of stuff that makes me think that's Agatha Harkness. Hi guys, just a little interruption to add to the WandaVision vibe. <laughs> no, but seriously, since recording this, I've had further theory conversations with Dan, who is my brother, and it turns out that first of all, the anniversary Agnes talks about on June the 2nd just so happens to be the exact date that the first witch was tried and convicted during the Salem Witch Trials, which is how Agatha Harkness died in the first place in the Marvel comics. I'll interrupt again later to add to another theory, so stay tuned. Now the next Wonder Man clue isn't actually in the show itself they did like a making of short video which I'll, I'll link in this in this video description and they show some of the the writers and the designers like talking about how they made the show and in the background of one of the shots it looks like there's a wonder man costume like an updated modern wonder man costume now why would that even be there if he wasn't going to show up why would there be wonder oats why would there be all the links to the grim reaper paul bettany has said in interviews that we're going to get into to more of Vision's history, we're gonna find out what happened to his body. To me that seems to be all about Vision's backstory. So yeah, I'm excited about that. So another idea for who the villain could be, um, potentially another villain, it could be that the Grim Reaper's here to throw us off and there's something bigger at work, is Mephisto. So Mephisto is the Marvel Universe's sort of version of the devil. He's not really the devil but he takes that form and he is a demon. So he absorbs souls and from the beginning of time in Marvel lore he can turn himself into different animals and he tries to create chaos and win souls and, and absorb them. So he is supposedly the snake that gets Adam and Eve to eat the apple that they're not supposed to. So Dan and I were talking after the episode, we had like a long chat on FaceTime about it, and Dan was convinced that there was something fishy about the rabbit in episode two. <laughs> and at first I thought, what are you talking about? And then I kind of thought, wait, like if Mephisto is the villain, he can transform himself into animals, it would kind of make sense. We also have that comment from Agnes in episode two when they're at the meeting with Dotty. She says that the devil is in other places and it could just be a joke about how Dotty is a horrible person, but it could also be a hint that she's working for or being controlled by Mephisto, that she is aware that he's around somehow. Now Mephisto is linked to Wanda in the comics because when Wanda creates her family, when she creates the twins, obviously she and Vision couldn't have children because he, he's a synthesoid, but she wanted them so badly that she willed them into existence and she didn't realise it. So in the Vision and the Scarlet Witch comic series, which is very much like what we're seeing in WandaVision, they live in this idyllic town in New Jersey. It's not quite as idyllic because um, there's a lot of persecution at that point against people with powers. In those comics we also see, by the way, we see characters called Glamour and Illusion and they are actually super powered magicians <laughs> that live locally and they see that Vision and Wanda are getting a lot of bigotry. Their first house, Vision and Wanda's first house was actually burnt down by bigots in that comic series. 
but they want to protect them because they're also super powered masquerading as you know normal magician entertainers when really they actually have got magic so yeah the characters of glamour and illusion that we saw in episode two they're real people from the comics but wanda wants her children so badly that subconsciously she reaches out for lost souls and she makes her kids and she doesn't really know that she's doing it this way it's certainly a tragedy for her and like real psychological horror when she finds out that her kids aren't real that they blink out of existence when she's not there there's scenes in the comics where babysitters are left with them and the babysitters lose the children and wanda's really angry because when she gets home the children are there but we see that the children are gone when wanda's not there and eventually these kids are reclaimed by mephisto because they came from a part of his soul he reabsorbs them and so that could be really relevant to wandavision because we know that we're having tommy and billy in this and rather than in the Vision and the Scarlet Witch comics, where we only have the twins in their childhood in those, we're obviously further forward in the Marvel canon at this point, so we know that those boys actually grow up to be Wiccan and Speed, and um, that's Billy Kaplan and Tommy Shepard, and I love them, and I won't talk about them now, I'll probably talk about them next video, because um, in episode three they're going to be born, and I can't talk about them further because once I start I won't stop, I could talk forever about them, but we know at this point who they're going to become so it's more exciting for the viewers and we assume that we're going to see them grow up through this series and actually become their Young Avengers uh, characters, so maybe reach about 16 or 17 years old. So Tommy has the powers of Quicksilver, but Billy has the powers of Wanda. In fact, he's actually a bit more powerful than Wanda. He is a reality warper, and in the comics, he is supposedly later going to become somebody called the Demiurge, and he is going to have the power of almost a god. He's going to be able to create realities more powerfully than Wanda ever could. Now that we know this about Billy and his future, and readers of The Young Avengers will know this, I know that the show and the MCU are going to be keen to introduce these characters, it could make sense that Mephisto wants Wanda to create these children as powerfully as possible so that when he reabsorbs their souls he takes on their powers. And when we have had the subliminal messaging in Wanda's world pushing her to create the children. In the first episode, Mrs. Hart is asking her why doesn't she have children yet, and in the second episode we have that weird for the children chant which is really creepy, but it's clearly making Wanda think, oh yeah, I don't have kids, I should make kids. It's like they want Billy and Tommy to be born. I mean, I will, I'm, I'm being kind when I say Billy and Tommy. Poor Tommy, I love him, but I don't think they'd do that for Tommy. They're probably after Billy. Billy is the reality warper. He's hugely powerful. If they can absorb his soul, if Mephisto could absorb his soul, he could potentially have those same powers, and that's dangerous in the hands of a demon. Hey guys, it's future Claudia again. So, the rabbit and the lobster were both brought in by Agnes, and the rabbit's name is Senor Scratchy. Now, Old Scratch is a nickname for the devil, so we're now starting to think that Agnes, or Agatha, has ended up in the devil, or Mephisto's debt possibly through making a deal with him to come back to life after being burned at the witch trials. That would link to WandaVision's themes of wanting life back and the cost of that. It's also interesting that Agnes doesn't make reference to the devil until Senor Scratchy is safe inside Wanda's house, so could this be her trying to subtly get a message across to Wanda trying to get Wanda to help her. Also with regard to Mephisto, something that Dan and I both noticed is that several times in the episodes, the number six is missing from places where it really should be. Now I haven't found the third one yet, but I think there's probably three missing sixes meant to symbolise the devil, meant to symbolise Mephisto. Okay, there are two more things that I wanted to point out here, and they both relate to Wanda's backstory. So we know that we're going to get deeper into Wanda's backstory, we, we've seen from the trailer that we're going to see the moment that Wanda gets her powers, we are yet to find out if they're going to reveal her to be a mutant or not. In the comics, this has changed over the years. Now, Wanda and Pietro's original backstory is that they were born to Magneto and his wife Magda. So in the comics, Magneto was originally their father, and I loved this story, I loved the dynamic between the three of them. I just can't forgive them for retconning that, but personally I think they're going to change it again because Marvel comics often do. I also think they changed this partly because at the time the Marvel Cinematic Universe didn't have the rights to the X-Men, and they seemed to want the Marvel comics to line up with the Cinematic Universe, so 
maybe that was a reason for the change i don't know but now they have the rights to the x-men so they can easily have magneto be their father and we know that the X-Men are coming into the MCU, so it's it's right there. But basically, Eric and Magda have a daughter together called Anya, um, but they experience a lot of discrimination because Magneto is a mutant and he has powers. So what happens is Anya, their daughter, gets trapped in a fire and Magneto can't get to her because the mob of people won't let him get there. So his first daughter dies in this fire and he is so angry and grieving at what's happened to his daughter, who's a child, that his powers end up killing loads of people. You can kind of see parallels with Wanda there, like, I mean, when you just think about that scene from Age of Ultron when Pietro dies and Wanda just falls to her knees in grief and the Ultron robots just get completely obliterated. But Magda, who is not a mutant, is so terrified by this and, and disturbed that all these people have died and the grief of it that she runs away. She's actually pregnant with Wanda and Pietro at that time. She ends up at Wondergore Mountain, which is where the high evolutionary a scientist is, and she gives birth there. And she meets Bova at that place. Bova is the cow midwife, by the way. <laughs> so Bova, the cow midwife, kind of nurses Wanda and Pietro. It's supposed that Magda dies there. We don't really know what happens to Magda, but Bova gives the children to a really nice Roma couple that live on Wondergore Mountain called Django and Maria Maximoff. So Wanda and Pietro are raised by Django and Maria and they don't know anything different, they think they're their birth parents until one day they become separated for them. There's a lot of violence and persecution in their backstory and with their family because their family are Roma people, they're travellers. There's this big altercation that happens and Wanda and Pietro are split off from their parents. Pietro just grabs Wanda and runs and doesn't look back because he's been taught to protect her. And that's when they end up wandering around Europe. And actually at one point they're being attacked by people. They're probably going to be killed in a sort of, in a hate crime against them because they're mutants and they have powers. When Magneto shows up and saves their lives. And Magneto at this point doesn't know that he's their father. It's just a coincidence. And they join Magneto and they become part of his brotherhood. They feel indebted to him. But before they join the Avengers, it's kind of like in Age of Ultron where they're on the other side and then they realise, wait, we're kind of on the wrong side here. We should switch over. And they do and they join the Avengers. So obviously that's different to in the MCU where we know that Wanda and Pietro's parents uh, were killed um, by one of Stark's weapons. So one of Stark's bombs went off and it killed them and they went through the floor and this is one of the big traumatising things that happened in their lives. So if you just replace uh, the incident of like the mob attacking the family with that situation with the bomb. We have a similar situation where Wanda and Pietro are left wandering, fending for themselves, and in the MCU it's quite different because they're from Sokovia and they're fed up of American influences like Tony Stark sending his weaponry over there, causing all this death and destruction, so they try and take a stand and they volunteer to be experimented on to try and fight back against this. So it's a kind of similar story in terms of they are good at heart, they fight for the right things, but they're kind of manipulated by somebody who uses those intentions badly. Now there is a picture in a frame in the intro to episode 2, and there are two figures in it, and I might be looking way too far into this, because the people in this photo I'm going to put on the screen, they could just be Vision and Wanda, but something that's bugging me is that Wanda's hair is wrong. Wanda's hair is not like that, and Wanda's drawn in quite a simplistic style in this intro, so they could easily have recreated that. I don't think those two figures are Wanda and Vision. I think it's possible that they are either Django and Maria, or they are Magda and Magneto. Now I know that's a reach, but I think it's a possibility considering all these other easter eggs they've put in, you know, like the Wanda oats and they've put in the bova milk. I mean, these are the sort of things they are planting. Also the advertisements in between the episodes, um, which I love by the way, it just keeps it really creepy and just psychologically really uneasy, I love it. We obviously have the Stark toaster which makes a noise as if it's a ticking bomb and we know that that traumatised Wanda because Wanda and Pietro saw their parents die in an explosion and then they were faced with a bomb themselves and they waited there all night and this thing luckily didn't go off and didn't kill them. I have a theory about that, that actually it's part of them being mutants and that at that moment their powers activated, only they can't remember it. So my theory is that Pietro has his super speed as his mutation because in that moment, in that fight or flight moment, his first reaction was to get Wanda and hide, like to get her and get her away from it. Now if there wasn't enough time for their parents to escape falling through the floor, 
How did Pietro have enough time to realise what was happening, see Wanda, get Wanda, pick her up and take her out of the way? I think that he had his mutation at that point. I think that his speed showed up, but they don't remember because it was traumatic. And I also think that Wanda's power showed up when they were faced with that bomb, because Wanda can alter reality, she can alter the odds. I think that bomb should have gone off, but I think it was Wanda's reality building, her desperation and her fear, that held that bomb and stopped it from going off and killing them. So I actually believe the twins' mutations probably saved them, even in the MCU version. And in these adverts we have a man and a woman, who've appeared in both of the adverts so far. They're a kind of middle-aged man and woman, and to me they look like the right sort of age for if they wanted to show us Django and Maria. And I just have a feeling that that is Wanda and Pietro's adopted parents in those clips. I think that there's something so eerie about the woman staring at us while that bomb is ticking, that toaster is ticking, and she just looks at us with those dead eyes. And I feel like that's Django and Maria potentially with the bomb that killed them. I might be looking too far into that, but that's what I think. Also, and this is just a point of view rather than anything concrete, if you look at the closing credits to WandaVision, there's something about that that to me just screams mutants. Like, that music doesn't seem to be written for Wanda. Maybe I'm wrong, but what it feels like and what we're seeing, I know we're seeing like television pixels or tiny little cells and we're seeing them multiplying and creating, so it's kind of Wanda's power but with a microscope on it really. But to me that just instinctively feels like the mutants. I mean, is that Wanda's mutation? Is that how mutations work? Also, I have to say, it wasn't lost on me that there are three different colour cells in that sequence. So there's red, there's green, and there's blue. Now, I just want Pietro back so badly <laughs> that maybe I'm just imagining things. But I feel like the green cell represents Vision, the blue cell represents Pietro, and the red cell represents Wanda, because we even see them go right past us on the screen, like the three of them together. And to me, that's just symbolism. But that might just be me with an English literature brain just overanalyzing. And I think if we look at Marvel Legends, which they put out before WandaVision, in the kind of lead up, you know, showing us the best parts of their characters and for Wanda and Vision, how they got here, Wanda's story features a lot of Pietro. Um, right towards the end when they show her battling Thanos, you can see that it cuts back to losing Pietro, losing Vision, and that those two things, those huge griefs and losses of those two important men in her life, are the things that kind of drove her over the edge into WandaVision. And I feel like they wouldn't have focused so much on Pietro at that end part in Marvel Legends if he wasn't going to come into it. I just feel like there's... These people, these writers know, they know the comics, they understand the characters, and I just feel like they know how important Pietro is here, and that there is no world in which Wanda is a reality warper where she can create whatever she wants, that she would not create her brother. There's no way at all. Anyway, I've got so much more to say, um, I'm sure I'll say it next week. I can't wait, I'll see you then. Thanks for sticking with and uh, watching with me. And uh, yeah, I'll see you really soon. Okay, love you. Bye. Thank you.